Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to my presentation about PMRs and performance. So, where's here? Who am I? Uh, I'm a freelancer. I'm doing mostly C++ programming. Uh, I started out as net with network protocols. Then I did um, a lot of client server, REST, and now I switched to Qt and user interfaces. I've uh, been working with Linux, Windows now uh, in the uh, in the last time more with embedded, and I somehow always cared about performance. So uh, what's in this talk? First intro, what, are, what we are doing now. Then uh, we'll uh, have a quick look at the allocators, then at the allocator support in STL, then at, at these uh, ominous PMRs. Nobody knows what it is. Then how can we use them? Then we'll, uh, I will digress a little to uh, system allocator themes, and then it will be question time and a short summary. What are allocators? Uh, well, the slowest part of computer hardware today is not the processor, but the memory bus. So we have to care about, uh, about CPU, CPU caches, we have to care about uh, the hotness, we have to care about data locality. Also, allocating memory is costly because syscalls are involved, we have to synchronize between threads, we have to care for uh, fragmentation, avoiding, avoid fragmentation, and allocators are pieces of software which try to uh, solve these problems to us. There are two kinds of memory allocators, system memory allocators, which will uh, be provided to you by, uh, by uh, the standard library, uh, by C library, libc. Uh, uh, they could be also injected into the program at, at the runtime on the startup. They are invoked uh, by malloc and free functions. And once set, they are uh, valid for, uh, globally for the entire program. Well, they are very good, I must say, but uh, they have, all, have also to uh, cater for a very wide range of applications. So the default settings are normally held uh, a little conservative and suboptimal. So there is some wiggle, uh, wiggling room for custom memory allocators. So custom memory allocators, we must uh, include them explicitly in our program programmatically, that, but they can be applied only to uh, some specific parts in program. They are simple to customize and uh, they can uh, uh, they provide not only for performance by, but can also uh, 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 simplify debugging, uh, they provide, can provide special placement of data, they can provide profiling of memory, memory allocation, and so on. So what, are, what is the wiggle room for memory allocators? Uh, there are two, two possibilities to uh, increase performance. First, first by faster, allocate, faster allocation and deallocation calls. Uh, and the second one is uh, by improving memory access and memory, lay, uh, memory layouts of the allocated data. And uh, which one dominates, it's, it, it depends uh, on the program. For short running, running program, faster allocation calls will be dominate. And for long running programs, of course, memory layout, fragmentation, memory diffusion, things like that. So. Uh, how is C++ supporting custom allocators? Uh, we, have, we can uh, overrate, override the global new and delete allocators for the entire program, very crude. We can uh, override it for a, for a single class. And then we can uh, use... Uh, uh, allocator support uh, 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 with SDL containers. So what is the uh, allocator API uh, 
in SDL. Uh, first, we have a couple of type defs which are, are needed. Then this rebind function, which isn't that interesting for us. And then comes the functional API. And these are two groups of functions. First, allocate and deallocate function. It, it deals with memory. It uh, gives memory for your objects and then construct and destroy. Construct will uh, take a memory and call uh, the uh, constructor and destroy. destroy will take memory and call the destructor on that memory. It's kind of placement new. And we have also comparison operators which are required. So. How is the interplay be between allocators and containers? SDL containers are included as a template parameter in, in containers type. Then, a container will take allocators, pointer, and the reference definitions. Here, this, this kind of stuff, and use it internally. Then, uh, Container will uh, uh, has to keep uh, an allocator instance as a member. Is that a problem? Is this waste, wasted space? When we uh, we have uh, 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 mm. we can have a look at at the code of uh, taken from Visual Studio, impl Studio implementation of, of vector, and then. Our allocator, the last parameter, will be uh, forwarded to a compressed pair. Pair, compressed pair. Anybody knows what it is? Compressed pair, boost compressed pair, ABO. Yes. Empty base optimization. Empty base optimization. So if the allocator is empty, it will be optimized optimized away. Not empty, stateless. <laughs> stateless. Uh, stateless. It means uh, it has no state. It has has no uh, uh, no members. And in C plus plus eighty nine, all allocators were stateless. Is that clear? Okay. So, what changed in C plus plus eleven? Well, a couple of things. First, we got support for stateful allocators, and then we got support for fancy pointers and scoped allocator. Uh, uh, this means allocator forwarding were fixed. So uh, we see in C++ 89 uh, a whole, uh, whole bunch of think, uh, things were, uh, was wrong. It, the design wasn't ready. Mm. But uh, we won't uh, discuss these, these fixes because now everybody uses C20. Who uses C20 in work? One, two, three, four, five people. 70? Ah, yes. And 40? 14? And who uses QT containers? Nobody. Okay, good. Because one one person because Qt container doesn't su don't support <laughs> allocators. So uh, okay, but so we will skip this C plus plus eleven uh, stuff and go uh, to C plus plus seventeen. And there was one unfinished business, and this is uh, this allocator type dependency on uh, container type dependency on allocator. It's part of container type, and is it a problem or is it a nuisance? Question. So, uh, if we define a function, and this fu function takes a uh, vector as, as parameter, and then we have two vectors, one, no uh, one normal standard vector and a second one with uh, a different allocator, then compiler will, uh, will accept one of the vectors and reject the other because type isn't there is no type match. So theoretically, what we should do is uh, to template every function 
uh, which, is, which is using uh, uh, containers on the allocator class. Well, nobody will do that because it's too much, ha too much hassle and it doesn't scale. Also, we've got many functions and everything can't, shouldn't be templated. It's just uh, syntactic noise. Uh, yes, there were uh, some attempts in C++ 11 to solve this problem, and the new, function, the new classes like function, promise, and chat pointer got support for type arrest allocators, but then it stopped. Uh, SDL uh, containers uh, were left unchanged. So the quest next question is what problems are PMR solving? and you probably know it <laughs> by now, or, mean, or at least sense it. Yes, this is the, uh, this type, uh, type sign signature uh, story. We don't want, uh, we have to fix in, in C, uh, we fixed in C++ 17. Uh, and the solution was, we wrap a base class for the new allocators in STL conformant allocator wrapper, so that we can use uh, the uh, containers uh, unchanged. And then we always will use this wrapper in our containers, and the single wrapper can use then different PMRs internally, polymorphically. And the question is, what design part pattern is that? Hmm? No? Bridge. <laughs> okay. So what are PMRs? Uh, Victor says it's poor man's rust. French people would say it's person, it's person mobilité réduite. But it's an acronym for polymorphic memory resource. Well, why not polymorphic allocator? So we have to have a look at the design of these types. So we have our old uh, STD container, and then we have uh, we templatize it on our new polymorphic allocator. This is our wrapper class. This wrapper class will then uh, have a pointer to a base class of PMR memory resource. And uh, if you want to provide a new memory allocator, we just implement new uh, type of uh, memory resource, new subclass. So uh, because polymorphic allocator doesn't change very much, it just stays as it is. So uh, this, old, uh, this whole library was uh, named after polymorphic memory resource, in short PMR. So this uh, PMR on the on the this is the right side yet on the right side uh, shows us uh, the uh, uh, the interface of an PMR. So it's the part of the allocator which uh, uh, well, uh, which does memory allocations, allocate the and deallocate. Plus is equal to uh, we need the, this to uh, uh, to distinguish between classless and uh, stateless and stateful allocators. So, how can we use that, that construction? Okay, we just here have, we just defined here some, uh, some buffer as, as memory. We give it to uh, my buffer resource, which I wrote. And then we will give this resource to our vector. How? By uh, taking a, uh, the address of it. And uh, this is working be because uh, in, in, this, uh, in the interface of polymorphic allocator, we have an implicit conversion. We can, we'll take a pointer to memory resource and wrap it in 
in, in, in this wrapper class. And uh, what is PML vector of string? It's uh, just a, temp a type def like this one uh, uh, we have in the next line, down, uh, like next code line. It's a, it's a, a template type def for a vector taking uh, a PML polymorphic allocator as allocator type. Uh, that's all. Immediately, you can uh, see here two problems. First, containers shouldn't outlive uh, its allocators because it's a naked pointer we are using. Second problem, PMR are not forwarded to standard string instances. This uh, uh, PMR vector taking string won't forward it, uh, P, uh, its PMR to the string. So that, oops, let me see. For example, we have here sign, so such uh, PMR vector of a string, and then we push back three small vectors, uh, strings, and they will use sim, uh, small string optimization and it won't, will stay within the PMR. But uh, when small string optimization is, is, is can't, can't be used, a, then a new operator will be called. So what is the, the correct way of doing it? Okay, we have just to, we have to uh, give it uh, not a, the naked string, but the PMR string type. And then the mechanism will, will uh, provide for forwarding, forwarding of the PMR to the string instance. Question? Everything clear? Okay. So, Kai. So, uh, what happens if uh, the uh, memory we gave, gave to uh, the, the uh, PMR uh, will be uh, exhausted? We mm, we can uh, set an upstream allocator, uh, upstream uh, PMR for 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 our base PMR. And if this uh, uh, memory also gets exhausted, then the default uh, memory resource will be used and it's, it's the new delete resource. New delete resource will fall back to global new delete operators. And of course, we can change that. We can set a new global uh, default resource. So uh, what about our uh, uh, implementing own uh, PMR classes? Well, uh, for a memory resource, it's not that complicated because we have to uh, implement three, three methods dealing with memory management. But uh, for allocator aware classes like PMR string, which will then uh, accept uh, PMRs from, uh, from its container, it's more complicated. And we won't discuss it in this talk. So. Instead of it, we will ha have a look of, uh, on, on the uh, PMRs provided by to us by the standard library. And we have some prepackaged PMR types in the standard library in C17. So the situation here is not so dire uh, as with uh, coroutines. We have, firstly, Two basic PMRs, which will be our workhorses. We will discuss them uh, in the following. Then two special PMRs, uh, namely new delete resource, which we already uh, have seen, and then a uh, null memory resource, which doesn't allocate anything. What's the, what's the use of it? We'll discuss it al also. Uh, and as a as, as, uh, third part of the support, 
there are many containers located in STD PML namespace, like PML vector, PML list, PML string, so we can just take it and use it. And uh, these are very cheap type devs for, regular, for normal uh, STL containers just with, with this polymorphic allocator set as default type, allocator type. Okay, this is, these are these three parts of our library support. So let's uh, have a look at, on our first workhorse, this monotonic buffer resource. That's a weird name, isn't it? But uh, the implementation of, of monotonic buffer is very simple. We have just a, a, a slab of memory, piece of memory, uh, and monotonic buffer will, is designed for very fast memory allocations. So it uh, uh, basically just will just bump up an internal pointer and all, uh, the entire allocation is, is done. Uh, however, memory will be released only when uh, this monotonic buffer, this PMR, gets out of scope in, scope in its uh, destructor. And if we just release a single uh, object, which was allocated by monotonic buffer, it's the allocate uh, operation, it's no, uh, no operation, does nothing. So, uh, we see here uh, three objects which, which were allocated by monotonic buffer and the object in the middle was released, is, uh, its destructor was called, but uh, the memory stays wasted. Is that clear? Okay, it stays wasted. And monotonic means always growing in, in mathematics. So, um, it's a matching name. Constructors, simple thing. We can uh, specify uh, memory upstreams, uh, initial sizes, and give uh, explicitly uh, uh, some buffer we allocated by ourselves uh, uh, for it to use. So, how are we using it? Just in the, in the standard way, we uh, can uh, mm, define a vector of, of PMR strings and give uh, uh, an address to, to this PMR to it. There is, however, one, one problem, and it, because it's not very uh, uh, intuitive, it, and its usage of, of such a monotonic buffer in, in a loop. Let's assume the first, uh, the, this buffer mem release isn't, isn't there. So we, uh, alloc uh, we uh, create a vector of strings, PML vector of PML strings, using some buffer memory resource, then we use it, and then it, it, it goes uh, out of scope, gets destroyed, but the monotonic buffer never shrinks. So when we start the new iteration, we will uh, next objects will be allocated at, at the current uh, position of the free pointer. It never shrinks, yeah? only on the lead. Uh, but for that, we have this release method, so that we rewind the pointer to the beginning. Is that clear? First iteration, object, 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 object. Now PML vector gets out of scope. Destructor, destructor, destructor called. And then the second part of, of, uh, of allocator is to release memory. But this guy here does nothing. Understood? And it, it has its usages. It's not 
just <laughs> badly designed uh, uh, allocator. Because I have to say, these allocators are not designed for, uh, for uh, the committee. They are taken over from an uh, uh, existing code base, which were using for, for 20 years or so at Bloomberg. So it's well designed, well tested. So, OK. Uh, we could, could think it's something new. It's something very shiny. No. Uh, people were using it all the time. Like uh, the first usage of it uh, I've seen was uh, to uh, increase performance of XML parsing program, which used uh, lists internally, and it was, of course, a uh, performance disaster. And then uh, when switched to such a simple buffer backed bump up allocator, it was a high performance uh, parser. So, in game pro programming, they are using it, it all the time. They were using it for, for ages. So, I have, don't have time to discuss it. Maybe in the question. Okay. But now the second uh, workhorse. This is our pool resource. We have it, uh, can have it synchronized and unsynchronized. And uh, what it does, it consists of collection of pools for different sizes. And allocations are also fast because we have just to find uh, the pool with the right size. Additionally, uh, fragmentation will be diminished and locality will be maximized because the, the object will be placed in... Uh, in contiguous memory, we will see that in, in a moment. But of course, it's optimized for blocks of equal sizes or objects which are roughly of the same size. So uh, constructors, we have just normal constructors with upstreams, but also uh, with options, which can customize a little uh, uh, this pool resource. Okay. Uh, this is how pool resource uh, will be implemented. And so we have a couple of pools for different sizes, and each of these uh, pools will uh, manage a, connect, a collection of chunks. These are chunks. And this chunks is divided in, in, in blocks. So you see it's contiguous. It uh, provides good locality and uh, no memory diffusion. So, uh, uh, mm, how can we uh, customize it? First, by required poolable size. It was, it's the old name. Largest required pool block. Uh, it, it tells you uh, simply that the largest pool we support is of size 4,000 something. And for larger pools, uh, for oversized pools, you have to go to upstream allocator. And then uh, uh, the length of of the chunk can be also uh, changed. There are some trade-offs uh, when, uh, when, when should uh, the length of the chunk be changed. Um, no, time, no time for that. It's much too much material. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, but also this isn't anything new. We used it in game programming for pool allocators for particle project, projectiles, spaceships. Uh, the first usage I ever seen of that was uh, uh, in network programming for network packets. So uh, pre-allocated blocks of, of equal size for the packets. And Apache HTTP server used it in the 80s uh, with memory pools. Uh, uh, and they had eva, even memory pools hierarchy for separation of, of, of operations and for locality. And it's all very old techniques. So, special PMRs, null memory results. Why should we need it at all? Well, it doesn't allocate, but it must do something, and it throws a bad alloc on allocate. So we could use it as a kind of allocation guard. We give uh, it as upstream resource for some monotonic buffer resource, 
uh, which is 20,000 bytes. And when these 20,000 bytes uh, get ex exhausted, we get bad allocated thrown. So there is a use for it in testing. So uh, how can we use PMRs? Because it was all very, very theoretically, theoretic. So, uh, but first, uh, have a look of some well-known memory tricks, which we pro probably uh, all know. Uh, uh, trick one, we need a local variable, local uh, string or vector, which will be used in a function and then uh, released. So the trick is that in, inste instead of allocating it on the heap, uh, use einfach, uh, simply use uh, a malloc extension called alloc a. And this will give you memory on stack. It's dangerous, I know, but people use it. So, uh, and that is something that monotonic bu buffer can do, always do, without using uh, malloc extension. So secondly, uh, we allocate many small memory blocks in malloc, so just uh, we want to shave off this overhead of, of system call and just allocate l one large block and split it by ourselves. So, and this is also what monotonic buffer does. And the uh, third, Third uh, well-known trick, we allocate and deallocate many mm, objects of same type or similar size. So people just cache memory blocks for that instead of returning them and then reuse it. It's all, and this is what our peer, uh, pool PMR does internally. So, Kai. Now, let's get a, a little bit specific. I have a couple of scenarios. Scenario one, we have a short-lived dynamic object. Locally, some string, some vector, and we have to build it up and then uh, somehow uh, uh, accumulate the values over it, something, yeah? And then we don't need it anymore. So, we can uh, just use a monotonic buffer resource backed with a local memory buffer on the stack. We just defined unsigned buffer something, le length of something, don't call alloc A or anything, and then give it to this monotonic buffer resource. And this resource uh, has a slab of memory and will bump up the pointer uh, on each allocation on, on the end it will just rewind the pointer. Oh. Overhead is minimal. And this will by normally bypass the global heap entirely. In which case, case uh, it, it, it will uh, allocate on global heap, but by, uh, who knows that? What is upstream, default upstream allocator? New delete. Yes, if we uh, if we if we uh, overflow this buffer, new delete uh, get kicked in. So, yeah. Understood. Scenario one. Scenario two. We have a large data structure, which isn't changed very often. It's first built up mono monotonically, like in monotonic buffer. Uh, it means elements are added, 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 once in a time may be removed, but normally not. So our recommendation is just take uh, our old friend monitoring buffer resource, which was designed for this case, especially for this case. For example, we are passing some configuration files and write it in, into configuration uh, map so it normally doesn't change very often. And, well, uh, here we, 
we don't specify any any local memory buffer. So what happens? Watch this, the default upstream. You delete, yeah. So at first, uh, unordered map will get uh, some memory. So we can say, uh, we can reserve the memory for the expected number of, of, of entries. So we don't reallocate it on uh, every time. If possible, call reserve on the container to avoid reallocation. Understood? OK, scenario two. Scenario three. We have a data structure. We have built it up, but we uh, update it on and on. So this, this buffer uh, guy isn't a good fit because it would grow endlessly. So in this case, pool resource would be a good fit. Why? We have seen it was optimized for efficient memory reuse and locality. So if we are uh, changing our data structure very often, we need something, some, some PMR, uh, which provides it. So we don't kill the performance. So this is a use case for, uh, for a pool resource. Of course, we mu must uh, uh, paramet parameterize it uh, uh, so that it fits, but in general, it's it's a use case for memory resource. It's the use case it was designed for. Scenario fear, four. Now we have a deep call chain, function call chain, maybe even a recursive recursive one, and in each of these functions, we need this these local uh, dynamic objects like vector of string which will be built up and, and something yeah so what can we do here we, this is also a case for for pool resource we just uh, define a pool resource and uh, pass it down uh, the call chain and what's the effect Why should it be good? Hmm? Cash? Reuse? Every time we get, uh, go out of a function and uh, the, the frame will be popped out of the stack, then uh, the memory backing, the, the, op the destroyed objects will be re returned to our pool. But then we will call a similar function uh, again, and then we, uh, it will use it will allocate similar objects, so uh, we can immediately reuse uh, memory which was uh, freed in, in the other function in the new one. And additionally. If the bl blocks returned to the pool will be probably still in cache and are ready for immediate reuse. Of course, in theory, yeah, but we have to measure, we have to experiment, but this would be also a good uh, fit for uh, pool resource. Is that clear? Yes, okay. Something advanced. Questions. Would we like to see something more advanced? Or uh, is everybody already confused? <laughs> okay, we can skip that. <laughs> Not? Advanced? Do you want to 
go advanced? Okay. So this is uh, one advanced scenario called wink out. Well, Google protobufs arenas use it. And what they say, object will be freed at once by discarding the entire arena, ideally without running destructors of contained objects. Nobody knows what it, what it means, yeah? So, let us have a look. We have a monotonic buffer for the cont container as PMR. And then, uh, ah, yes, yes, yes. We want to uh, achieve that no, no destructors will be called for the elements of the container. For example, string, string destructions, uh, destructors and so on. Because if we are out of the function, we don't need these objects. So, so the trick is we can uh, use monotonic buffer from the container of the objects. Okay. This is C plus plus twenty, but monotonic buffer buffer resource. Now. I directly construct an allocator, what normally is done in, uh, in constructor of, of, the, of the container, but here I don't need a container, I need the allocator, and then also C++20, I call new object, and on this allocator, and it will do two things. It will allocate memory, and call constructors of the objects. Okay, it's it's a, a shortcut for construct and and allocate. Now we can use it, use it, use it. Oh yeah, and it's we be, we get a pointer to the object. Then we use the object, and at the end of the scope, it's no more needed. But is the data leaked? And will be will constructors be called? <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You should be very, very aware that the, the data you're pushing in is not trivially destructible. You have a big problem. Of course, no side eff effects on yeah, constructors. Yeah, sorry, I, I missed that one. Of course, because it's an advanced, advanced expert only uh, technique. So, uh, here we leaked this object. So, no constructors for it will be called. Here, in polymorphic allocator, the underlying memory will be freed at the point where this allocator goes out of scope. So, we freed the memory and didn't call any const destructors. Yeehaw. And this is what protobuf, protobuf arenas uh, provides. And they provide ev even, uh, additionally, provide even a uh, registration function for constructors that must be called on the exit. So, okay. Understood? Or oh, is this all a great confusing mess? <laughs> No, it's not that difficult. Uh, it's not an advanced talk. <laughs> so now I, I, I would like to digress a little and, and uh, see at GMLog. What's GMLog? GMLog is a, a system memory allocators, allocator. And it's, it was designed to reduce fragmentation and provide good good con concurrent scalability. It has, it has many features beyond normal allocators, and its major user, users are FreeBSD, where it originated, Mozilla Firefox, with, and they have quite a, a, um, an amount of success with fragmentation, reducing fragmentation in, in Firefox with it. And then it, it was passed to Facebook, 
I mean, uh, the developer of it was passed, <laughs> passed on to Facebook. Databases also liked it, like it because it uh, is very uh, con concurrent in, in, in yeah. scalable in concurrent environment, and also Android switched to it, so it's a good thing, I think. So, and what, uh, how it is, how it, it is designed, it reduces log contentions for threaded programs by, uh, mm, by creating uh, multiple, multiple arenas. And arena is some sub-allocator which works totally independently of each other. Uh, so as a default, uh, it creates four arenas per CPU or core, I think. It, it was like that some time ago. And uh, then, internally, it differenti differentiates between three size categories, small, large, and huge, for objects, uh, to, to apply different optimizations. And these categories are far further split into different size classes. Seen that already? Pool allocator, anyone? Yeah, okay. Additionally, these allocators support uh, thread specific caching, like TC malloc. Uh, this means each thread, each thread had a thread local memory with uh, most accessed objects in them. So, and we can tune it. We can tune it with runtime options. Like we can, we can switch, uh, switch on the back background thread for, for um, purging of dirty pages. We can change uh, decay and decay time for, for unused pages. We can change arena count if we don't like too much uh, memory waste and we can uh, switch on affinity, uh, thread to ar arena affinity, and we can get extensive traces and extensive statistics for it. If you are uh, looking for memory problems, then GMLog or TCMLog. TCMLog is al also good, but GMLog uh, has better performance as well. So then it's, it's for you. So examples from the documentation doesn't look very uh, uh, very cool. It's just uh, parameterization for high resource applications with CPU prior, uh, prior prioritizing CPU utilization memory, uh, then uh, uh, applications with lower memory consumption and uh, with to totally no <laughs> memory. So it's not that interesting. Uh, it's more like for system administrators or SRE uh, engineers, but we have also programmatic API as, as malloc extension. It, it's called malloc, malloc X, and we can do a couple of things there. We can explicitly create new arenas, new thread caches. And then we can access it, them with malloc x, giving, uh, uh, giving an ID to it. So an application could uh, allocate frequently accessed objects it has in a dedicated arena which was created before that and improve locality and decrease uh, contention and so on and so on. And also uh, such created arena, you can, you can uh, tune it individually, for example, for relaxed decay time, if frequent reuse will, is expected. So we wait a little bit longer before we give memory back to operating system. Let me, see. Let me have a little water. So, we can also 
programmatically set uh, an explicit, explicit binding between a thread and a, a, some arena. So to, to set a, f a thread arena affinity uh, by hand, not globally. And yeah, to allocate contention on the allocator level. Okay, good. And then we have extent hooks. It's far too advanced, but uh, these extent hooks allow you to implement your own memory, uh, uh, memory uh, handling. And example use of it is, because it's so cool, uh, utilization of huge pages to reduce TLB miss misses. I've had it already in some presentation here. And it was done by, by Facebook HVM. They wrote uh, its, their, their own uh, extent hooks uh, to manage one, one gigabyte huge pages for frequently accessed data. It's a cool thing. And it's open source. You just have to Google for it. So, oh, we have time, we have time. Comparison with PMRs, because there are some similarities here, and the me mechanism are, uh, some mechanisms are uh, not that different. Okay, but first, what JML log uh, developers say as an extreme example, we can use it, use, we can allocate uh, this, um, an arena and use it at, as pool allocator, because internally it will have this, this gradation for different, uh, different object sizes. So, and then we will do a general purpose allocator, allocation on it, and then the entire arena gets destroyed in the single operation and so on. Yes, and what does it look like? It, it's somehow similar to Apache memory pools. However, yes, Apache. However, uh, our mechanism, uh, our PMR, which will mm, duplicate this uh, mechanism, is the synchronized pool resource because uh, Arenas are uh, synchronized by, by, by logs. Second point, thread caches. You can, you can also uh, allocate a thread cache for you. So for, for me, this, it looks like just a memory slab. I allocate locally. So somehow uh, similar to monotonic buffer resource but without all the, all the mechanism. It's it just uh, a slab of memory. And uh, the size of, of uh, thread cache must be configured because uh, there is a default max size, you have to change it and so on. So this, what do you think? Would you use it? Because it's, it's, it's cool, <laughs> it's nice. But I gave it uh, a thought because I didn't know that you can you can uh, 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 customize uh, global memory uh, system memory operator in, uh, allocator in that way because there was never possible mit, mit, uh, with with uh, 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 GNU's memory allocator with standard malloc and TC malloc. Uh, hasn't that much, you can uh, change somehow number of threads or, or, th or thread cache size, something like that, something like that. but JMALloc has an extensive support for customizations. But then I thought, okay, I will go back to my PMRs <laughs> and will use would use it maybe as an upstream allocator to, to provide basic memory for it. And for example, Facebook, Folly, everybody knows that, that library, Folly library by Facebook, by uh, Alexandrescu and 
company, they have an FB vector, uh, a replacement for, for standard vector. And what they are doing, they are uh, trying to detect are we using JA malloc? And if so, we know what, uh, what reallocation strategy is it using internally, and then this vector will not grow uh, and we uh, so somehow ex exponentially uh, two times in a size, but it will use just the same uh, growth strategy uh, that JMRLock is using internally. So that's a cool, cool case of optimization. And they are also using uh, support for relocatable types in JMLLock, which we don't have in C++ at the moment. Uh, another, another possible usage would be tagged heap allocator. Every Heard of it? Anyone? Okay, tagged heap would, is something like you can say on what heap you want to allocate some objects, uh, uh, game, uh, game, game industry uses, uses that, Naughty Dog, I think, was using that. And you have mem several heaps, and then the program can uh, choose which heap it is using, and then after, after it's no, no more needed, it will be released, uh, but not not all uh, objects of a program will be released, but only those uh, which were allocated on a given heap. It's tagged heap, because you give a tag when allocating something from the heap. And we could implement it with uh, JMLLock arenas, for example. But unfortunately, it's not included in STL in standard library, so summing up. How many? Oh, five minutes. Okay. My conclusions are that writing custom data, data structures, allocators, and so on is costly, but now we have PMR, and it, it, uh, it can be used for most of the use cases, so we are happy to develop developer. Uh, the system allocator tuning is interesting, but, well, I, would s I, I personally would stay with PMRs. Of course, never use uh, my scenarios <laughs> as a rule of thumb. Just measure, experiment, update, measure again. And then you see if it makes sense. So uh, another thing with allocators, it's not, they are not only uh, improving performance, but can do other things like placing objects, for example, on the stack, on the file map memory, on shared memory, uh, then uh, can measure and report memory usage, test correctness of programs in C++23, but we will come to that. Are there any problems there? Well, C++ wouldn't be C++ if there weren't any problems <laughs> with a li library module. So what we don't have is, for example, shared memory resource. What we would, we would like it. I want it, but okay, we have, we have boost interprocess allocators. Okay, and they could be plugged in in, in STL uh, containers. It, it is working. Admittedly, I don't know. I didn't try it, but Boos is uh, um, saying it will be it it will be okay. Then PMR test resource for uh, which is used at Bloomberg's for years wasn't uh, included in in C plus plus eleven. Not. Mm, also not in C++ 20, and maybe it, it will come in in, uh, 20, in C++ 23, but I don't know, uh, didn't, didn't, hear anything. didn't hear anything about it. So, it's not uh, uh, complete. The support is not complete. Secondly, uh, 
We have gotchas. For example, shared pointer is not allocator over, but it has an allocator argument, but it won't be passed down to its, uh, its contents. So you just have to know it, and it's not intuitive. So in C14, I said it already, this standard function, STD function, had constructors taking allocator arguments and then uh, uh, they implemented um, uh, type erasure uh, allocators internally. But it was removed in C17 because it wasn't that good specified and nobody uh, knew how to implement it. And each implementation was different. And then in C17, standard any has learned from it and doesn't know uh, allocator customization at all. Because why not? It's only, it, it's, it's problematic. We don't, we don't want to do it. What's in the future for us? Okay, let's be frank. This all was very boring, okay? We are lazy, uh, lazy programmers. Why, why, why can't we uh, let compiler do the work? And yes, some people are thinking about it. For example, this here would be a future syntax in C++. We have some container and that's it. We don't think about, about allocating anything. We simply say to the compiler, well, uh, use this allocator for that and do all the plumbing. There was even, I think, some people tried to uh, bring a proposal, but I don't know, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, like really? Like Lakos from Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah, it's the Lakos allocator model. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pa Pablo <laughs> Halpern and. Uh, no, they tried to propose something else, mm. but it's in this this. Uh, in this vein. In this manner, like mm -hmm. uh, to put in the class using something, yeah. and everybody who's in that class would use that. So. Uh, I would like it. And you? Uh -huh. Allocator stuff. Wow. Even better. Uh, why, 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 why can't we forget about all that? Uh, compilers are, are optimizing things. Uh, let the compiler optimize the heap uh, layout of a program. So it's performant. And we could do it like uh, with LT or PG or profile guided or annotation based and Work on it is underway, but only in the research community. So it's a long way to go. <laughs> so that's it. Question time. <laughs> or do you want to learn even more? I have many <laughs> slides. <laughs> You don't Hello. have questions, you will be bombarded. Yeah, so um, early in the talk, you, you mentioned that one of the, the drawbacks of including the allocator in the template type is that you can't pass it to all your functions that already take an, a vector, right? Um, so if I understand correctly, that that problem still exists with the, with the new thing, kind of, unless you've kind already of. committed because, to changing because everything. Because we have, we, have, we have one wrapper, and this, uh, this wrapper will be used exclusively, so there's no variation in, in this type. So we fix PML type for string, and that's all. And we can, uh, we can then uh, plug in different memory allocations. Come, 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 come. Where is it? Here. No, no. This is Victor. What? Yeah, this one. This is our our 
can say it. Placeholder. Uh, we need it here, but we don't, we, only once. When we fixed it, it's all uh, this uh, STD container will be in PMR, STD, uh, STD PMR uh, namespace. No, hmm. maybe not, if it's so defined. But we have this placeholder, holder, and every container will only use this place, placeholder, and if we change memory allocations, we don't change this, right. but this. But this assumes you've already ported your whole code base from std vector into the new thing now, which may or may not be hard yes. to do. Maybe <laughs> not. <Okay. laughs> but these are optimizations. You don't need to, uh, to uh, apply it, it everywhere. You just apply it and, and at, at um, uh, pieces of code uh, which would need it. Okay. Because premature optimization and so on. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, short question, if I understood correctly, could you go to the pool slide where you see these yes. different like blocks? If I understood it correctly, that the configuration is only the largest required yeah. pool, not the minimum. No. Okay, so, so if I have like, if I know, for example, use case that I know of, I compute FFTs. Mm -hmm. And I have always the same size for, for uh, FFT arrays that I need. And I know that it's like three distinctive sizes, for example. So I would also know the minimum, not only the maximum that I want to allocate. Mm. That's not but, possible here. Yeah, but, but if we give uh, the maximum size and the uh, uh, pool allocator will, uh, will then um, compute this, this gradation. OK, thanks. So maybe there is a case when another standard library uh, PMR. Everything clear? <laughs> I don't have a question, I have yeah. a comment. So this is this expert winkable stuff. Yeah. Uh, I couldn't emphasize more how important this is for anybody doing uh, graphs, uh, trees, or anything like that. Heavy computations on uh, graphs, trees, on, or so on, with a lot of yeah. allocations. So based on uh, John Lacko's talk back here, I think in 17, yeah. We use this like allocate everything, don't destroy anything, yeah. and just throw away a memory at last. And the performance was like three hundred percent. I gave so, a talk, so. talk on this uh, topic last year, but, uh, but it, it was it was online. advanced level. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can I can show it to you. This uh, graph uh, graph uh, uh, garbage collection. Yeah. We already implemented mm -hmm. our okay. stuff back in 2017, but uh, yes. I just wanted to comment, who doesn't know about this should find out. Yeah. But, yeah. okay, it's, it's, it wasn't supposed to be a, an advanced talk. Yeah. It was just the basics. Two PMRs, how they're plug, plugged in, uh, how can I use it, and if you want to read more, just... One ping more me, ping me on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question. Yeah. Uh, if I uh, maybe I missed it, but uh, you said that one of the problems is that uh, uh, PMR resource whatever shouldn't out uh, no the vector that uses it shouldn't outlive it. But no, it's not fixed, right? This is still no. It's it's by yes. design. It's not fixed. Yeah. Okay. So you have to take care. Yeah. It's it's like it's it's the same situation uh, we have with uh, lambda captures. You have to take take care. Yeah. Okay. You have to know what you are doing. Uh, we are C programmers, C plus plus. Or C. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. So we know what we are doing as C plus plus programmers. Python programmers don't know that. But it was it was it is clear what I wanted to convey to you. Yeah. These allocator classes, how can can they be used and that there are also advanced uses for expert only because there comes 
there comes the question, it, it is undefined behavior or not? It's not. But tell me why. Expert only. It's another talk. It's an advanced talk. Thank you.